Okay, hello everyone and welcome to day five of Newcastle Startup Week. This is Keep Going or Pivot Day. So if you don't know me already, I'm Sarah Crimmins um, and I'm going to be hosting a panel for you, um, which is super, super exciting. I've called it Love in the Time of COVID-19, which is a bit of a twist on um, a different book, which was called Love in the Time of Cholera. It's not going to be along those lines. Basically, I just want us to listen to some amazing women that I've brought together in this group and talk about the experiences that they've had in business, in life, in work, because of lockdown and of COVID-19 specifically. So we're going to talk about experiences. We're also going to touch on just a little bit of a... Um, a question at the end which is is about love and how we can maybe look at loving ourselves and others and even the situation at a time like this as well so um it's about the approach that we take to things um what emotion we're feeling different things that come up and whether we can really tap into that place of love rather than anger or, or wherever we're coming from so without further ado i'm going to let my beautiful panel introduce themselves one by one and then we're going to start the conversation so if my first lovely panel member could introduce herself please hello um i'm emily harkness i'm a yoga teacher as a side job and then uh, my full-time job is in marketing. I'm a communications coordinator for an international nonprofit. And so, yeah, I think that's, that's it. I, I don't sound like a Geordie because I'm Canadian. Um, is that, was there anything else you're looking for in the intro or is that? I'm muted myself there. <laughs> no, that's <laughs> brilliant. Um, that's brilliant. Yeah, just okay, what your name is and, and what, like blind date, who's, what's your name? Where do you come from? Please. Yeah. Hi everyone, I'm Emma Whittenstall. Um, I'm also not a Geordie, uh, but I do live here and have done for 14 years. Um, so I'm in a bit of a transition period at the moment, so it's hard to think of how to describe myself really, which is very fitting for this panel. But I guess one thing I can confirm is I'm a freelance, freelance um, events producer. Um, I've got a background in the digital sector and I'm just about to start a new job which I'll talk about um, in a little bit more detail. Um, currently I'm working as a kind of hybrid role as a uh, program manager and operations uh, manager for um, an apprenticeship organisation so yeah more to come on that. Hi everyone and hi Sarah thank you for having me. Um, I'm Jane Imry, I'm a correspondent at the Daily, which is a business news platform based in Newcastle. Um, alongside that, I also co-host a podcast called The Last Tuesday Project, which is a research podcast based on um, basically how anyone can do research into any topic with an hour and the internet. So what better time to talk about that kind of thing. I also uh, do a lot of creative writing and I participate in a lot of spoken word events and I write poetry and short stories. So that's me. Hi everybody, um, my name is Paula, Paula Donaldson, and I am a business owner of a little plant-based cafe and I'm also like a bit of a chef. My background is in like catering, um, hotel management, bar, restaurants, and, um, and I'm based at the coast in Whitley Bay. And that's it really. Hi everybody, um, my name's Rebecca Marley and I'm also not a Geordie, so I'm originally from um, Cheshire and I came up to Newcastle, um, god I don't know, 2012 probably, yes, for university, I went to Northumbria and I kind of fell in love with the North East and decided to never leave, much to my, probably my parents' um, sadness, but no, I love living here and after graduation I went straight into a full-time job in advertising, I was an account manager and then in 2018, I left my corporate job to go full time on a business idea, um, which has changed so many times since kind of officially starting it. Um, but right now I am the owner of a business called Fempowerment Box, which similar to other people on the panel is in a little bit of a transitional period as well, where there's no firm plans. Um, we're just seeing how it goes, but uh, Ultimately, it's a subscription service that's designed to empower women through discovery, content, and community. 
Brilliant. Thank you, guys. Like, as you can see and you can hear already, we've got a massive diversity of different roles, different jobs, different life situations um, already here. And that's what I want to segue into as our first kind of question for the panel is, you know, we've, we've come into this time of, um, of lockdown, of this virus hitting us and suddenly being told that life is going to change. And life has changed for everyone in very similar ways in terms of you know distancing from other people but also in hugely different ways depending on our circumstances so what i'd like to ask um our brilliant speakers first is and I'll, I'll pick you out one by one perhaps is when lockdown first hit i suppose um can you tell us like a little bit about your story what happened in your life um what situation did you find yourself in work-wise what situation did you find yourself in family-wise um relationships any kind of thing that, that basically happened what's your story in terms of lockdown and um, if we could start with emma please that would be great thanks remember to unmute myself that time um so for me lockdown lockdown has been very strange and full of um twists and turns so i guess before lockdown started as a bit of background as i mentioned before i'm, I'm working full time um and i was really looking for a way to Kind of spend more time with my family um uh, alongside that i also had this kind of business idea that was in its very early stages which was um leading towards one of my passions sustainability it was a zero waste business that was in the market research phase um unfortunately for me and the business uh, the whole point of the business was having lots of people in one place because it was going to be a delivery service to uh, business parks and large corporations to bring zero waste to uh, the masses, I guess. So that, that's on hold, obviously, um, for now. I need to have a little think about that. Um, in terms of my job, at first it was working from home, similar to a lot of people. I've also got two young children, so I'm gonna be frank with you. On day one, I was crying by 11 o'clock in the morning because my job involves being on the phone all day, it's on, thing on Zoom all day, things like this, and um, yeah, I couldn't cope. Hats off to anybody that's still doing it. It's absolutely amazing. Um, but within a week, my husband was furloughed. So that kind of took the pressure off. He started taking over that kind of childcare responsibility. And then a week after that, I was furloughed as well. So that's my current situation at the moment. I don't know how much further you want me to go into it now, Sarah, or leave some... Let's just go, let's let's stop there for now and move on okay. to others and then we'll segue into what's going on now. I'm really excited sure. to hear what's coming as a result of that. So if we could maybe have, um, go with Emily next um, and hear your story, please. Thank you. Sure. So um, essentially at the beginning of this year, I realized I needed to start to slow things down because I was literally hitting a point where I was going to burn out. Um, so actually for... January, February, I was like, okay, what changes can I make in my life? Um, and I was just in the process of still exploring those options when lockdown came. Um, so my background is I, I work full time um, as a marketing coordinator and I've been teaching yoga for two and a half years as well as like a side job. Um, and I'm just quite a busy person naturally, um, which has served me well in a lot of ways, but I was just kind of hitting a point where I was like, this really isn't working for me anymore. I'm not getting any enjoyment out of any of the stuff that I'm doing because I, it just feels like I'm just go, go, go all the time. So when lockdown happened, um, it felt kind of, it kind of felt like a, a thing from the universe that I had been asking for in a way because all of a sudden it was like, oh, stay home. Like you can't go to the office. You can't teach yoga at the studios because there's no, all the studios are closed. Um, and in a way I was kind of like, okay, we'll see what happens. This is great. Obviously I had no idea. At first I thought, oh, it'll be like two weeks. Um, and then on a, on a personal level as well, my, my husband's father was quite poorly um, and we had been visiting him a lot in the hospital and at the care home. And all of a sudden that was kind of taken away as well, which was very emotionally challenging. But at the same time, it was like every day we were feeling kind of guilty if we couldn't get to the hospital or the care home to visit him. Um, and all of a sudden it was just like, well, you, you can't. And it, so it was very, there was a lot of conflicting emotions floating around. Um, so originally when lockdown first hit, I was working from home. Um, the nonprofit that I work for puts on international summer programs for kids. 
So you can see that that is a little bit problematic and interesting at this time. Um, so since then I've been furloughed. I've been furloughed for about a month now and I'm gonna be furloughed until at least July. Um, and it's just been a very interesting experience. Um, so yeah, again, I won't go too, too much into that, um, but that's kind of where I'm at. Um, yeah. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. So again, we're seeing kind of similarities um, between you and Emma, but then also quite big differences as well in terms of the situation you found yourself in. I'd love to hear from Paula now because yours is going to be quite stark contrast in terms of your story. So I'd love to hear from you, Paula. Um, hi. Um, so I'm pretty much like Emily in the way that at the beginning of the year, I was working six days a week, seven till seven. Um, um, I, I have a cafe Pulp Fiction and we make everything by hand so it was like I'm just constantly at work and and I just and I have lots of other things going on in my head that I want to do but I just never have time I've tried to get staff in so that I can step away from the cafe for the last two years and it just hasn't happened and um, when lockdown happened it actually the week before we were um, we booked a little house um, in Staines to go and stay and it was just sort of like, it was just, stop, it was just going crazy in Italy. And we were sort of like, um, should we go? Should we not go? And we were like, well, let's just go. Um, we left on the Sunday and I, we were keeping the cafe open for the week with the staff. And, um, and it was so quiet, I just told them to, to close. So we literally had the week um, to think about what we were going to do and how, you know, we knew that cafes are going to close. You can't social distance in a cafe. And it was, I'm self-employed. And that's my, you know, that's my income, what, we, what we're going to do. So during that week, we basically just planned menus, decided that, right, let's take this um, as a delivery service. And um, yeah, so we, it was really, really nice, actually, to have that week just to, just to sort of like ground ourselves and get ready for what may come or what may not come. So we kind of like hit the ground running and we've, and we've done what we're doing now from, from day one. Um, and it's yeah, I feel kind of like even though we're, we're we've got restrictions, I actually personally feel free. So yeah, but more about that later. Yeah, yeah. that's amazing. And what I'm loving here is that from the outside you could look at um like emily's situation and be like oh well she's in a job and she's been furloughed and to you paula is oh well she's got her own business and that's completely different in terms of um how you would make your money how you'd have your income and what you would do on a day-to-day -day basis i suppose but it's not actually as you said that there's a lot of similarities there and it's often not about the outside um how it looks it's about how you're feeling as you as a person and that goes for whether you're in a job or whether you are self-employed and a business owner as well. So I'd love to hear from Jane next, please, if you could share your story. Thank you. Thanks, Paula. Yes. So um, as I said, I work for B Daily. Um, I am still working full time. I have worked throughout lockdown. I have been working constantly. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's it's obviously it's just been insane as it has been for everybody. Um, my living situation is I'm in a shared house with one other person and it's yeah it's been, it's been um, when when lockdown first happened I, I don't know I just kind of I think I just kind of threw myself into my work and um, B Daily are really that they had the infrastructure to work from home already set up which is great with like they have a really good flexible infrastructure with online kind of communication through slack and things like that so it was perfect the transition working from home was actually like quite easy and they were really supportive and it's very much like a close-knit team and we all look out for each other so in terms of that it's been all right transitioning personally for me working from home has meant that occupying a space that i don't spend a lot of time in regularly so that's been quite a new thing to get used to and just establishing a bit of a routine um on a personal level, I've been having a bit of a, I know Sarah knows a lot about this, I've been having um, a self-development journey of my own for, I would say, probably for about a year and a half, but it's really kind of ramped up this year. And just as we went to lockdown, I was on a bit of a, um, a kick for trying lots of new things. So that halted that completely in its tracks. I was trying um, new hobbies. I'd just started doing aerial classes, things like that. And this has completely halted that. Um, and I've just obviously I, I am 
grateful that I'm still working. It is tiring. It's hard because sometimes I think when you hear other people talk about being bored and you're working so hard, it, you've got to kind of reconcile any resentment that you have with, you know, the gratefulness that you're still working. And I am grateful I'm still working and I'm grateful that I'm working for the company that I am and I'm grateful that I'm doing what I do because businesses, like we write for small to medium businesses and right now they need they need support and they need content and they need to know a direction to go in. So I feel like there's some purpose in what I'm doing. Um, so yes, that was my experience of, of going into lockdown. Amazing. Thank you, Jane. And again, I'm seeing so much overlap between different people. Um, I'm really uh, picking out there the self-development journey. Um, I know that um, I think, pro yeah, I think everyone is on a, a, a version of a self-development journey when I'm looking at you all here, <laughs> um, whether that's through courses or through joining things like you're saying, Jane, or um, through go developing with your business as well. So I think that segues quite nicely into Rebecca, because I know that she's been on a big journey with, with her businesses um being a very true entrepreneur in the real sense of the word um but i think she'll also say that it's not just about the business that's developing it's about the person as well so rebecca if you could tell us a bit about your story please yeah so i'm one of the most like dramatic people in the world so obviously at the start of lockdown it was oh my god this is the end of the world this is the end of the business this is gone on sending me a sign I need to give up why am I doing this like why is it happening to me not that it's a global pandemic but in my head like oh it's happening to me of course of course this would happen to me my look um but basically like I only launched for empowerment box um last September and it's a seasonal box and so by kind of March when lockdown happened that was my third ever box and just judging on the kind of results and success from the first and the second box I wanted this business to grow so I kind of took a massive risk after the winter box to completely like double my stock with obviously like with things strategies in place so I had like great kind of a team on board in terms of helping me with marketing PR comms making sure that was in place from January and um, so when we launched Mar the spring box in March we had these kind of balls already rolling and I personally had so many events that I'd signed up to around the northeast in London for March and April to begin with. Um, and I was so excited. I was kind of taking the business on a little mini tour of the UK. And I thought, obviously, all these things in place. Definitely, we're going to double our quantity that we normally do. Like, it would be kind of a bit of a shame if we didn't. Um, so I've got all this stock. It's all in my house. I live in a little bungalow in Heaton. My garage is full. Brought, like a just launching spring, March 1st, great. And then kind of, you know, two, three weeks in, it's locked down. All my events have been canceled. Kind of relationships with other um, people that were helping me didn't kind of work out in the way I wanted to. So the balls weren't successfully rolling as I thought. And then obviously money got tight, so you had to cut the team. Luckily for me, the business, it's, it's just me full-time employing the business. So everybody else is kind of freelance support, which was a shame because I know that they need help. But for me, it was like retreat. I can't guarantee to pay these people. I need to stop this kind of stuff going on. So I've got no marketing, like outsource marketing. I've got no PR and I've got no events. There's no way that we're going to double this stock. So basically like the first week or so of lockdown, I kind of had crisis talks with my dad and be, we just agreed that let's see how the first month goes but this might be it and it might be like just maybe it was the wrong timing um so yeah I, in my head I thought well I'll just I've got nothing else to do so I might as well keep going with the business whilst I'm here I work from home anyway so that wasn't really too much of a change and then just yeah let's just keep going there's not, not much else going on um can't get a job anyway and that's my, so my first kind of two weeks month of lockdown was, this is the end of the business. I won't tell anyone though, because obviously I don't want to say that. And let's just find something else to do with my life when this is over. So. I love that. And you've kind of, you touched on there, kind of how you cope in a way. And I think that what I've experienced is these waves of like, you know, being that like, oh my God, the world's ending. I'm going to die because everyone seems to be getting this virus. And if you're going to get this virus, you're going to die. Like, you know, that's just what's happening to being like, actually, everything's fine. 
Um, you know, like, I don't actually know anyone who's got this virus, you know, everything seems to be going okay to being, you know, any, anywhere in between those two polarities as well. So if you actually, Rebecca, you've touched on a couple of ways you've kind of coped, I suppose, by what you've kind of put in place there, your crisis talks with your dad, that kind of thing. Is there any other kind of strategies you've used or actions you've taken to kind of cope with what's been happening in the interim? Yeah. So kind of obviously at the start, like I said, like my, it was, oh my God, 2020 is going to be the best year ever. And then it was, no, this is the end of the business. And then my kind of coping mechanism at that point was literally just do like the minimum I need to do on the business just to have like it ticking over. Mm. But then like my partner who I live with, like he'd been furloughed. So he had this kind of spare time now. And it was, I literally did, because I'd, I'd accepted in my head that that's what was happening. I just went with it and just accepted that I had freer days. And actually I just started enjoying doing other things. Like luckily, obviously for us, the weather was really nice, which I think helped. Um, but just yeah it literally was accepting the crash of it and just being like there's nothing i can do this is shit but it's shit for everyone and that actually at the end of the day people's health obviously at that time as well it was very much communicated to us that everyone was gonna die or like half the population was gonna die so again it was like well that's way more important than a business that's very very early stages i'm only 25 as well so on the scheme of things you know people's health i didn't feel comfortable selling because I didn't feel comfortable putting that message out there. So it's just, I can't really do much. So let's just enjoy the sun and um, get up when I want to go for walks. And I literally just embraced that down for as long as it lasted. And then I started to kind of get a bit kind of feeling back. And then things started happening, which I'll probably touch on later. Just kind of the, the world telling me to kind of keep going. So, oh, this, I'll keep going. I'll, I'll do this. I'll do this. And it's just kind of rolled and, it has now, it's going back up again, which is good. <laughs> Amazing, this is what I love as well. I talked um, at the last Newcastle Startup Week about like peaks and troughs, um, expansions and contractions. And we do, this is this is life, this is it's cyclical living. Me and Emily have just done a course called Find Your Flow, completely about cyclical living, which is, you know, you do have those highs, and they will always be followed by a low, but then that will always be followed by a high as well. There is no rhyme or reason as to how long the high will last or how long the low will last, but it will always happen. So um, I love I love that point that you've made there. Thanks, Rebecca. I'm wondering if we can move on to um, maybe Emma and, and if you could share a couple of the, you've obviously, you're a different um, stage because you have kids. So that might be very different in terms of coping strategies. If you could share a bit with us about that, Emma. Yeah, and I totally echo what uh, Rebecca's just said about, you know, just taking it as it is and trying to enjoy every moment. Um, as I said right at the beginning, I was looking for a way to spend more time with my kids and suddenly that was dropped in my lap and it was just like, oh, wow, this is amazing. As much as there's so much of that horrible stuff going on in the background, yes, people are losing people, people are losing their businesses and things like that. I just had to kind of take stock and just be grateful for what I had. Um, and yes, we do homeschooling and that's stressful, but then we're also just putting a massive focus on fun and enjoying the time that we've got that we would never normally have with boisterous five and seven year olds um, who made me sleep in a tent last night, hence the eye bags. I had about three hours sleep. Um, so, yeah, it's all about that. But, you know, it is peaks and troughs. It's, you know, one minute you're all having the best time ever the next minute everybody's in tears and uh screaming into the fridge so nobody can hear you and then shutting the door and turning around and carrying on you know that kind of that kind of scenario so um i mean for me there's there's obviously been in terms of family massive changes the kids can't see their grandparents for a start and they're they're used to seeing them every single day they just live up the road so again, it's kind of making what you can of it. So we'll go up and talk to them socially distancing through their kitchen window. And that's now turned into, they've set up a cafe called the Pit Stop Cafe. And we go up there and we pretend that we're at a cafe and like they, they give us sweets through the window and things like that. And, you know, probably against the rules, but hey, we're not touching them. It, we're two meters apart and they love it. The kids love it. They can't have a hug, but you just got to do what you can do. So, so yeah, and also, you know what, the other thing I'm really appreciating is this reconnecting with people that have been out of touch for so long. So my best friend, for example, lives in France 
Um, she has her own business. She's run off her feet constantly. Maybe we speak two, three times a year. We've been texting every day. We've been on Zoom multiple times. Um, the same with my own family. Like we're not a family that stays in touch. Now we have the uh, ubiquitous uh, Zoom quiz on a Sunday night, which everybody seems to have. So yeah, for me, it's just really appreciating the now and that reconnection with people. I love that. I think um, quite, I'm looking at you all here and I feel like probably all of you can um, identify with that in some way, shape or form. Um, I'd love to go to Emily next because I know that you specifically were like Emma. So Emma was looking for a way to spend more time with their family. You were kind of thinking, oh, what if I had the space to slow down and really actually think about what I want and what I need? Um, how have you coped? Like what have you put in place or what have you found that worked? And obviously with mm -hmm. dealing with the lack of connection with certain people as well, especially loved ones. Um, I'm sure you must have some coping strategies or things that you've done to help. Yeah, so I mean, the, the highs and lows, peaks and troughs, whatever you want to call them. Um, oh my God. <laughs> I've spoken with Sarah a few times since the beginning of lockdown and every time I'm just like, this is literally, it's not even a day to day, it's like hour to hour, sometimes minute to minute. Like this will feel really easy and I'll be so grateful and so appreciative of all the space. And then the next moment I'm just like in, in panic and in crisis. Um, and it's gotten, it's gotten a lot better over the past few weeks um, to an extent. So um, one thing that I'll say is that, so two weeks ago, my father-in-law who was poorly, he did actually pass away um, in the care home. He had COVID. Um, and he was, again, he was very poorly anyways, but um, it was, that was an extremely difficult thing to deal with emotionally because obviously when anyone passes, it's, it's horrible. Like, it's just, you can't explain it. It's just awful. But for someone to pass away and you know that they're dying and you can't go see them um, and you can't even really talk to them on the phone because they're that poorly that they, they can't, they're not there. Um, I never in my life expected that I would have to go through that because um, you just, why would you? Um, so that's been a lot to deal with uh, and just trying to, in a lot of ways, trying to have, you lose your support network when you come into a situation like this. You lose your support network as you know it. Um, so the people who you connect with, like for me, my family in Canada, my friends in Canada, like that's all the same. And that's all actually like, Emma was saying, I actually talk to my family and my friends in Canada a lot more than normal because the, the time change doesn't matter because no one's working. Um, but, you know, in terms of people who I would see and um, ask to go grab a beer or a coffee or something to have a good chat, like you just have to, you have to literally pivot your support system and find something new. Um, so I feel like I've actually done a pretty good job of doing that and kind of moving my relationships online, which still feels really unnatural. I just miss, I miss touching people. I miss hugging people. Um, but it is what it is. Um, so just in terms of the ways that I've been trying to deal with things when, when this all first happened and again, my job, my side job, um, my kind of care visit needs, um, that was all taken away my first instinct, even though this is what I had kind of in a, in a weird way, a very dramatic way, what I had been asking for, my first instinct was like, oh my God, look at all the space. We can be so productive. We can like, we can start teaching online. We can have like, you know, teach every day. I can make a website. I can, you know, I can do all these courses I've always wanted to do. And then it, something just hit me and I was like, don't do that. Like you need to stop, like, cause this is, I, I think it's, it's been a really big learning experience for me in terms of recognizing my inability to sit with myself. Um, and this, so this has been a really good invitation for me to actually be like, okay, <laughs> let's take some time. Let's actually process what's happening both outside and inside. Um, so yeah, so, and then just, for me as well, limiting my news consumption has become more and more important as this goes on. Like for the first few weeks, I was just refresh, refresh, refresh. It wasn't really working for me, but I just kept doing it. But the past few days specifically, I've just had total fatigue with it. Like if my husband puts it on, I'm like, just go in the other room. Like I don't, I don't want to hear it. Um, and like daily movement 
has been really essential to me to just getting my energy levels up because I do find it's really hard to actually get energy being stuck at home all the time. Um, and then, yeah, just taking advantage of the ability that I can nap in the middle of the day if I'm tired. Um, I can call someone at noon if I want to or like, just, yeah. And I think another one of the big things was just letting go of this idea of perfect because you know, for, I've, I've done a few online classes, um, with, with teaching yoga and I have so much anxiety about like, you know, what if, what if the camera angles wrong? What if this, and, and I've done it and these things have happened and you know what, things have been fine. Like people, like you just, you're doing your best with what you're given right now. And that's all that you can ask of yourself. Um, so yes, yeah, so I don't know. I feel like that was very rambly, but that's, that's kind of my, my experience has been very rambly and very up and down. So, yeah. Oh, and I love that. And I think so many people must be able to identify that. I'm seeing nods already, like throughout what you were saying, I saw a lot of nods from everyone actually. And just what you're saying, like, everything will be fine. You know, you might not have that perfect camera angle. You might not get the brief out a hundred percent perfect. You might not be able to speak to every single person that day, but it's all right. Cause it will be fine. And you know, there is tomorrow or it might not actually be that important. You might realize that whatever you didn't get done actually doesn't need to get done and you can just remove it from your list rather than bumping it down. I've, I'm, I've definitely been clearing out my calendar of things that really aren't necessary and anything that isn't necessary in that moment, but is I would like to do or is something that I need. I've just been rescheduling if I haven't been feeling like it's, it's right for me at that time. And again, it's <clears throat> about knowing whether to keep go, going or whether to, to kind of pivot your activities in a different direction um i know you, you touched on yoga there because you are a yoga teacher i um follow paula on instagram and she oh, well on many channels because i love her and um, she's been posting a lot of um a yoga book that she has um with different kind of poses that you can do and i found it really soothing actually for um her to share those with me because to begin with i was like oh what's this black and white old book of these weird diagrams with these women in these odd leotards <laughs> And when I've looked at what they were actually saying, it's it's really lovely and it's it's very much about, you know, doing your stretches, doing your yoga poses, but a lot of it about breathing and um sitting with yourself and being. And I think a lot of us are finding at this moment, like Emma was saying about being with kids, um, it is about being and kind of being in that moment and in a way, you know, whether you want to call it surrender or accepting or whatever it is, um, just accepting where you are and, and trying to work with that rather than trying to go at 100 miles an hour. So I'd love to hear from Paula now. I know you said that you, you, you were always on the hamster wheel as well, weren't you? And you've really done that slow down. Um, so any kind of coping strategies that you've found throughout this time, um, things that have helped you? Yes, I was on the hamster wheel, um, and I love yoga. And I've done you. I've done yoga for like nearly thirty years. I and the the book that you're talking about is the one that I always go to when I sort of like veer away from it. I'm not a big class person because I spend so much time with people. I'm I'm in hospitality. You're with people, you know, all the time. So I, I'm very insular in my in my way when I'm away from people. I like to be on my own. So I like to practice on my own. And so I always go back to that book. I'm going to get you one of those books because uh, I always find them in charity shops and pass them on to friends because um, it's just really, um, well, it's just the original 38 poses of yoga. And, but it's the thoughts of the day that are very sort of like 60s housewife sort of, and they just make me giggle. But yeah, so yoga has been, so I've done the 28 day challenge. I've been getting up every day and doing that. And I finished that. So I'm now looking for, I'm going to do the 40 day Kundalini yoga class which um, that's my next challenge. But yeah, I'm not really a stressy person in general. I'm very sort of like a chilled person. Um, and I think when the sh lockdown happened, I think that my thought was that I'm not going to see people. You know, I'm with people every day from nine till five, different people having different conversations with them. Um, and that's my sort of like, that, that's how I get my energy. And I thought, what am I going to do without that? I'm going to be like, but then we started delivering. I only deliver twice a week, but I do see all my regular customers. And it's lovely. I'm a feeder. And that I love feeding people. and love making sure everybody's healthy and getting what they need. And 
and sort of like so that's given me my coping that that's sort of like kept me sane actually it's just lovely to see that you know not socially distanced just have a chat on the doorstep with them make sure they're okay make sure there's anything that they're you know it, it's just nice to chat to people so i haven't where a lot of people have had to have shut down and they've gone a bit stir crazy because they're in the house on their own i haven't had that so um i feel very blessed to um to be able to go out and and feed people still so um but otherwise i haven't had any lows i haven't haven't hit that that ground yet i do rely very much on like vibrations and i try and keep my vibrations up all the time just by maybe doing something funny i'll i'll do a silly dance or i'll listen to nice music um essential oils i get up every morning and i and i cut some essential oils in my hands that are going to make my vibrations higher and and i just sort of concentrate on that and concentrate on making sure that i'm doing my best to stay well because if i don't stay well i can't go out and do my job and and i'm self-employed and yeah we've got a help because we've got a um, we all got like ten thousand pound because we have a, a business property but you know a lot of people think yeah you've got ten thousand pound that's great but yeah that has to be on a rent that's been my electricity because i'm not being filled and i'm not getting weekly money from the government and because i'm self-employed and we, we, we plow a lot of money back into our businesses we're not getting sort of like any regular income in that way so it was i've got to keep myself healthy as well so um yeah so i've just yeah just doing a lot of research and on food and nutrition and, and you know i'm really falling back in love with with what i've been too busy doing to to refresh my knowledge yeah but yeah I love that, Paula. Um, you said so many things that I think touch on so many different points. I think for specifically for entrepreneurs or anyone who is um, extroverted or, or even introverts as well, you know, humans are social beings. We're meant to be with each other. You know, we're meant to be in contact with each other. We're not meant to be apart and in isolation for really long periods of time. As much as I know I, I like isolation, um, for myself when I choose it for a certain amount of time, but I'm definitely missing that physical touch too. And I, for one, am very thankful for you because you come to my doorstep <laughs> with food deliveries most Mondays and Fridays, to be fair, <laughs> when I order. So I'm very thankful for that. I know Jane's um, taken this up as well. And um, it is lovely to be able to, like as Emily was saying, you know, she really missed the contact with humans and it's it's a really big learning process to adjust to an online relationship with someone online connections instead because there is something really to be said for that human to human in the same space contact and maybe it is along the lines of vibrations um i know that's something that i believe in i know a lot of people don't believe in that and that's absolutely fine whether it's energy or whether it's just you know closeness however you want to call it i'm sure everyone can attest to i mean throughout newcastle startup week this week so many people have been saying online is brilliant but there's just no substitute for the in-person event which we really believe as well even though we're loving the online space we're so pleased that it's we've been able to do this um yeah there is no substitute for just being together in person so it's energy and what i also hear from you is it's about knowing yourself in terms of how you cope so for you, it's about, you know, you can use essential oils, you keep yourself healthy. Um, for other people, they'll be using different coping strategies as we've, as we've heard. So I'd love to hear from, um, from Jane about your coping strategies. Um, and I know that you've been kind of trying to support other people as well. You've been kind of putting calls out for, if you're not feeling like you're coping, get in touch with me. So if you could touch on that as well. Yeah, certainly. Um, I feel like my, my situation I've heard a lot of you guys talking about slowing down, which is something that I am trying to do, but obviously because of the nature of my work, I haven't had the opportunity to slow down in, in maybe the same way. Um, so we kind of had to transition, well, from a, in a professional sense, we had to transition from obviously going into the office and business as usual to being at home, not knowing what was happening with the economy or with the world and, and still having to put out content. So we had to, I personally had to think really quickly about how we were going to do that and um, we're a very very small team as I've said there's myself and there's another editorial member of staff who only started in January bless her and she is absolutely smashing it I just want to say that Chloe my colleague is doing an amazing job 
um, and being thrown into a, a situation like this as well, like she's doing fantastically. But it was just a case of there's no precedent for this. We didn't know how this was going to look. Um, so how do we how do we carry on? And we actually had done a really interesting and valuable um, kind of reassessment of our, our brand values, which I know sometimes sounds a little bit like marketing speak, but it was a really interesting session or a few sessions that we did to kind of come up with some new values for the business and we're all involved and I feel very aligned with the values that we came up with which is incredibly helpful in a situation like this because when I didn't know what to write when I didn't know what direction to take the content in I just referred back to the values and those values are um, be authentic own your role pursue growth and value connection and we we you know they're not just buzzwords we dived in deep to figure out what they meant and they have stood the test of time and the test of stress in my opinion because when I was thinking about how to go forward those values guided us and that's the advice I gave my colleagues and that's what I said and that's what I've been saying in Zoom meetings and it's really helped. So in a position where I haven't been able to slow down going back to the values that matter to me because they, they do matter to me as well as the business of being a big driver so just making sure I'm being authentic and making sure I'm valuing connection and pursuing growth and owning my role so in terms of being authentic a lot of that has been um, allowing myself to feel the ups and downs uh, I saw Sarah's talk last uh, start of week last year and it really stuck with me I've spoken to her about it, it really resonated with me um, about expansion and contraction and remembering that and remembering that it's okay to be down and I've been I'm a big advocate of having a cry if you need to have a cry I've had cries on many of my walks out and about I must look crazy um just crying in front of a horse in a field but it's fine like and I allow myself that space and I think that's really important just allowing yourself to be to feel authentic and you know however that is in the moment um, and as well setting boundaries because obviously working from home it can be tempting to well, I'll just work a little bit longer, I'll just start a little bit earlier, I'll just work through lunch. And I have done those things, but I think being strict about, well, no, this is my time. And part of that is setting up the routine so that this is work and this is home, just so that I've got that downtime. Um, in terms of owning my role, obviously just making sure that the content that we've been putting out is what businesses want and what they need, because you know they're struggling as well. Um, we did shortly after all this began I kind of put out a bit of a statement saying that you know um, Be Daily wants to continue to celebrate innovation of businesses because we believe that innovation and entrepreneurship those that, that kind of spirit that's going to get us through and navigate these waters um, and I believe that I truly believe that and I think that's really helped us to steer the direction of the content that we're doing we're doing a lot on um, on pivoting businesses which is very appropriate for today businesses that have taken this crisis and used it to kind of innovate and change so yeah, so that's been a great angle to take. Um, pursuing growth, obviously, when I've had time, um, trying to you know expand my horizons and learn more and and do new you know have new experiences. This is a new experience, so this definitely counts. Um, and then there's personal stuff as well that I'll go into. Um, and then value and connection. So I would consider myself an extrovert. I am energized by connections with other people. I do like downtime, but again, like Sarah said. I like downtime that I pick for a certain amount of time. I am very energized by connections with other people. And I figured that that was going to be important in the weeks to come. Before lockdown happened, I, I sensed that, you know, my, my, my passion for connecting with people might be something that people need or they might benefit from. So before lockdown began, I actually started putting out call outs on social media, um, just saying, I love chatting on the phone. If anybody wants to chat on the phone through lockdown, please feel free. And I've continually kept up that message. And I've been chatting to lots of people, people I haven't talked to before, people I haven't talked to in a long time. Just because I think if that's something that will nourish me and it has the potential to help somebody else, then I really, I really want it to do that. So, yeah, so that's how I've been uh, coping, kind of sticking to my values. And then, of course, things like maintaining a routine and um, getting out into nature. That's been huge for me exercise I exercise every day um, I go out for a walk or a run every day and um, yeah just trying to be as healthy as possible obviously not like obviously treating myself when it's appropriate and 
when I feel like I'm down because that's part of the expansion of contraction as well just treating yourself with love when you need to be treated with love yeah I, I feel like that went a bit rambly as well sorry, sorry. <laughs> not at all it's um I really because the way zoom works and all online systems you can only have one person talk at the same time so you kind of I want to give each of you the airtime so that you can get your words out otherwise we'll just be like Bruh! over each other so um wasn't rambly at all so much gold in that Jane and um, thank you for sharing and what I love there is that you started something new and that's one of our hashtags Paul came up with the hashtag start something new um before COVID even happened this was the kind of the theme for um for startup week from january of this year and it you know starting something new doesn't need to um be something huge it could actually be something you know like journaling every day or going for a walk every day which to some people might actually seem really really huge so it's our perception of what's what small and big are and really it's about the impact or the influence it can have on your life in terms of how big or small it is really so you have started something new there, which is um is really great thank you so much for sharing um so much so much gold is coming out of the stuff that you're sharing um guys i'm really appreciative of you all being here um i'd love to move to um you were talking about pivoting and who do i want to go to next i think I'm caught between Paula and Emma. I think we'll have Emma's voice in the space first because I'd love to hear where you are now and what, um, if you've got any aspirations for the future, are you planning? Because I'm wondering in this point in time whether people are kind of looking at tomorrow, maybe next month, but in terms of long term, some people might not be planning at all. So would love to hear where you are now. Obviously things have changed and if you have any aspirations for the future. Big question. Um, so where I am now, let's deal with that one because that's easy. Uh, so things have just changed massively for me. So um, I said I was on furlough. Um, I've now actually handed my notice in in that job because I've had two different um, opportunities come up for me, uh, which is amazing during this period. I never thought anything like that would happen. Um, so the first one, which I'm so excited about, I've just started working um, as a freelance talks programmer for the Festival of the Festival of Thrift, try getting that one out. Um, so that's an amazing festival that takes place every September in Kirk Leatham in Redcar, all about sustainability, one of my passions. Um, so my role there is to look at um, panel talks and see what we can do to kind of move some of that potentially online or look at smaller events. Um, obviously that's a, it's a strange thing, it happens in September, nobody knows what the rules are gonna be um, by the time it comes around to that. but whatever form it's in, please check it out because it's going to be amazing. So I'd been in talks with um, Stella Hall, the director of that festival for about a year actually, um, and that actually all came into fruition in April. So yeah, it was during lockdown. So that's been keeping me busy um, thinking about how we can do that and how I can add my two pennies worth into making that a success. Um, and then similarly, uh, again, another conversation that had been ongoing for a while with Dynamo, the um, tech sector kind of support organization for the Northeast. Um, we'd been chatting a bit about um, potential roles there. And then again, something just came up. Um, so now I've gone from being on furlough to from the 8th of June, actually going back into a full time job and having some freelancing on the side. So it's going to be another transition for me from mum at home to oh god where am I going to put an office and how am I going to do this so <laughs> so that's where I am at the moment um so that's short term future obviously June it's only a couple of weeks away um and then long term you know I'd love to get the business idea back up online um so that's something that's still on the back burner something that me and my husband are still talking about um but yeah that's a kind of long-term thing let's let's just see how the the two roles that i've got going forward work out first <laughs> yes and what you do with the kids as well <laughs> yeah doesn't bear thinking about <laughs> i love your kids they're brilliant um congratulations on the the roles that have come up for you it's wonderful oh, thank you yeah yeah it's wonderful to hear that this kind of stuff can happen when I think a lot of us feel like everything's stopped or just like ground to a halt. Mm -hmm, and what exactly. Jamie's saying as well, you know, like people are still working and for some people we're actually busier than ever. Um, yeah. Like for me personally, I work on social media for a hand wash and hand gel brand. <laughs> so in terms of being busy, we have a lot of 
of customer stuff coming through because everyone wants hand wash and hand gel. So um, that's the busy side of things. But then on the other side, we can really have the slowdown. And I think, again, it's about acknowledging where we are as people, because, yes, we might have businesses, we might have jobs, but we are a person. And we need to be um, aware of, of what's going on inside of us so that we can kind of work with our own energies. Because essentially, when we take care of ourselves, then we can take care of other people. We can do our jobs more effectively. We can be more productive in whatever way you want to be productive, however you term that. So um, thank you for sharing, Emma, and congratulations again. Um, I want to move to Paula now. I'm conscious of time, so um, probably have like 10, maybe 15 minutes left. I want to move to Paula because um, you've definitely pivoted, haven't you? And I'm seeing kind of um, similarities between what Emma's just said. You've definitely found things have gone slightly differently for you, haven't you? So what's your, where are you now and any aspirations for the future, please? Um, so the delivery service, that was something that had in the pipeline to launch in August. But obviously this happenings brought it forward. Um, it was something that I always wanted to do, but I was never sure if it would work. And it has worked. And a lot of my customers are sort of like, are you going to keep on doing it? And um, more so, I'm actually closing the cafe. I've decided to close the cafe. Um, I'm just renovating a big kitchen upstairs so I can move upstairs because I'm lucky enough to actually live within my business. So that's been a lot easier because I can just nip up and down and do my cooking and um, you know, spend time at home as well as in my business sort of thing. So that's been really lucky. But my, my partner, who is, is it part of business with me, and um, we've gone through life always working together and he's come and helped me or I've been and helped him or we've joined together and ran a hotel together. So we've always, you know, for 16 years, we've always worked together and he loves, um, he loves mid-century furniture. And um, so he's actually taken over the shop now and we're, we're going to, we've got to stay on the street and we're going to um, do what we love. So we're having a little bit of both worlds, but I also cater for retreats and run retreats. So it's really freed up my time because whenever I was doing retreats and running the cafe, like the week up to a retreat was just crazy because I had to make sure we had enough food for the cafe, make sure all the staff were there, make sure that, you know, everything was ready for when I was away. And, and then, you know, going and catering for sort of like 25 people on my own. And it was all a bit, I, something I loved doing, but it was really manic. So it's really just freed up time for me to concentrate on what I really love doing. So it's, it made me get off that hamster wheel of life that I never saw a way of getting off. And, and yeah, so it's a, it's a, it's a really good turn. I'm, I'm really, really excited um, for what is to come. Mm -hmm. that's amazing because I remember you talking to me because as I say you do deliver to me because I absolutely love your food it's second to none in my opinion we've just had um Thai week and now we're into home comforts week I've already put my order in for Friday and Monday um because sometimes you know Jane mentioned treating ourselves um also in terms of self-care and looking after ourselves again so we can well, first of all, look after ourselves just for ourselves, but then to be more productive at work, to have better relationships, to be able to connect, to be able to keep going, we need to sometimes call on other people for support. And the way I found in doing that is by um, calling someone like Paula, um, usually it is Paula, for something healthy, which means I don't need to cook because I want to be putting good stuff into my body because the alternative is probably ordering a really naughty domino's pizza which you know when you don't eat gluten or dairy that's like the worst way you can go <laughs> so um having someone like paula literally on my doorstep when she comes to deliver literally on my doorstep two meters away um is really lovely and it also feeds into um having a little bit of contact with someone in real life as well which is is invaluable um i'm really excited for your business because you're going to carry on the the deliveries and you're still going to do the retreats aren't you and then but doing the the shop like the bricks and mortar that's going to be the the furniture side of things so i'm super excited for you as well so congratulations um next i would love to move to who should we go to next Emily, um, any, um, where are you now and any aspirations for the future? I know you've done a couple of like fundraising things, which I love the look of as well. Yeah. So I have, like I said, I've very much taken my foot off the gas, which has been a big learning exercise for me. Um, and to be honest, in terms of plans for the future, this, this has been a big lesson and just for me learning to go with the flow for once in my life. Cause I just, yeah. I don't know. I don't know what's happening. And I'm just at the point right now where I'm like, you know what? It's, it's exactly what we were just saying. It's going to be okay. 
and I'm going to try not to stress myself out about it right now. I'm just going to go with the flow and take the opportunities that come through to me um, and really just kind of surrender my, my push. Like I, I just tend to push things to try and make them happen. So what I've been trying to do is just stop doing that, allow things to come to me um, and take those opportunities. So um, for example, I, I told myself, I, I was like, I'm not going to teach online um, at the start of my furlough because I want to have some time to myself. I want to have some time to recharge my very drained batteries. Um, but since then I've been approached to do, um, like I'm doing a weekly beer and yoga thing on Instagram to help support an app that's trying to support pubs and local breweries right now, because obviously those guys are having a really hard time. Um, and then my little sister in Canada has been running a, um, this really cool initiative called Headbands for Helpers. So the idea is that, you know, nurses and frontline workers who are having to wear masks all the time are getting basically like rashes and welts behind their ears because the elastics are rubbing up. So what she's been doing is she has her own business where she makes these really cool trendy headbands on Etsy. And she's been making headbands and sewing buttons onto them so people can just like loop the loops around the buttons. Um, and so she's, she's given them to like completely for free. Um, she's fundraised everything and she's given them to, I think over 2000 people in Ontario and Quebec. Um, so I've done an online yoga fundraiser for her. Um, I'm doing a restorative workshop this weekend that my friend asked me if I would do with her. So I'm just kind of taking things as they come. And I've had a few marketing um, freelance opportunities come up too, which has been really, really exciting because I'm just like, oh, if I, if I let go, it's not that things just stop. Like it's actually more, more things seem to be coming to me naturally. And so yeah, so I think it's it's been a big lesson for me in that way that I, I don't need to just push through things as much as I, I think I've, I've always felt that I had to. Amazing, I love this. It, this lesson in surrender for me was such a tough one. Like I was invited to do this last year when I, I became ill around like September, October time. I think it was, I just, I had no energy to do anything and I had to just stay at home and not do it. I couldn't go to, all my coping mechanisms were taken away from me. Now when I look back, it was literally preparing me for COVID and lockdown because if I'd just been thrust into this like fresh, I think I would have really suffered but surrender is not an easy thing to um to kind of lie into it's we we get so much resistance from it i definitely felt resistance anyway and when we could learn like okay take a breath let's stop pushing let's just let what happens happens having that trust and that faith that everything will work out is is a huge lesson it's actually been one of the biggest ones that i've learned and I'm not always there. Sometimes I will resist and I'll keep pushing and pushing. But I know when I relax into things, it's like, okay, I just have to trust that the next thing is going to come along and I can take little actions towards it, but let's not hustle. Let's not grind. Let's not push myself to breaking point because then nothing's going to come because I'm just going to be like, I'm flat on my back and not being able to do anything. So um, thank you for sharing that. That's a really, really lovely insight. Um, I'd love to hear from Jane and then Rebecca next. And then just very quickly to wrap up, probably like a yes, no answer, unless you have a very short comment to this love question. So Jane, you're um, where you are now and, and where you're going to go in a couple of minutes, please. Um, yeah, I really, what Emily said really resonated with me about not pushing. Um, I know I'm aware I am still working and I'm still working full time and I'm, I'm, you know, doing that, if I do say so, quite well. Um, but I do think I've definitely had a bit of a transition in the last week or so when I think after the announcement that Boris made about the vague changes to things, um, I've definitely pivoted into stepping away a little bit and, and maybe just slowing down a little bit and I think that's kind of my plan is to just kind of continue that and focus on myself and invest in myself obviously keep doing the job I'm doing but you know just maintaining those boundaries and, and keeping myself healthy and looking at this as a longer term thing um on a so professionally it's it's much much the same um kind of stuff and um, staying innovative thinking about what businesses need not just doing the same content like you know just just kind of going with the flow on that front um on a personal level um obviously the the situation has made me think that as i've said i want to invest in myself 
I am considering kind of my living situation, things like that, and that on a long-term basis, is that something I want to continue with? So that's that's a priority for me. And yeah, just kind of investing in myself and staying connected with other people, but just prioritizing self-care. A bit cheesy, but it's definitely my priority right now. Mm. I think we say this, yeah, like we talk about it being cheesy and all these kind of things because it's not um like there aren't necessarily other people involved in it. Like you don't need to be, you know, calling on someone else to do self-care. It is all about self. And I think like this word selfish as well has such a bad rep. Um, it's seen as such a negative thing. But when we take care of ourselves, it's we're actually taking care of everyone around us as well. Because if we're depleted, if we don't have any energy, we're running on fumes. It's very, very difficult to take care of everyone um, effectively. I'm sure Emma can attest to this with having children. <laughs> And sometimes needs must, you just, you know, you have to run on the fumes, probably of coffee and wine <laughs> so, um, to get you through, which is, again, that's a coping mechanism in itself. And I know for sure that, you know, I don't even have children, but I've definitely used those slightly unhealthier coping mechanisms in the past. And sometimes they serve, sometimes they don't. For me, I found recently in this situation, the kind of the underlying stress that's actually um, permeating all of us, whether we realise or not. Um, means that when I do have a drink it affects me really really quickly um, it's just like that energy thing like we have different energy being inside not being like I get sapped from doing like too many zoom calls um, whereas if I was out in person I think I would probably be okay um, so it's and whereas alcohol a little bit for me I'm like drunk off one glass of wine and I'm like oh that doesn't feel great <laughs> whereas you know most of you can attest if you've been out with me that I can I can drink quite a lot when we go out to a bar <laughs> but yeah so it's about just being really self-aware I suppose and being looking after yourself isn't selfish um I would I would say so um yeah lastly I would love to hear from Rebecca and get your voice in this space and then I just want to do that very quick roundup of the love question um yeah so I think kind of for me because I'd come to the acceptance that just take a step back and um not force any kind of fighting mechanism with the business because I think when it first happened there was a lot of noise especially on Instagram or social media with businesses all pivoting to do online so content's always been like a big thing for us but there was constantly all these like videos webinars zoom calls resource packs and there was everything and that kind of felt quite a natural step for me for the business but it also I didn't want to join in in that space. There was so much going on. I didn't know how I could offer something that somebody wasn't already doing or I just wasn't in the right headspace to do that. So I didn't do it. And then I think what that's kind of maybe led in a positive way is because I did take that step back, I was able to see how the business was running and what I could kind of take from that was we do subscription boxes, but we also offer the box as a gift. And what I noticed was that so many orders, the orders actually were coming in and they kept coming in. And I was like, oh, I didn't expect this to happen. But actually the majority of them were gifts and people were sending our spring box as a little gift of self-care to their friends or family members. And it was, I do gift cards that people can write in. And I could see the messages that people were sending to each other, which again, from a business point of view, was really helpful because... I could see that people were really buying into the kind of idea of sending love and sending care. And I could see what they were writing, which, you know, I then was able to translate that in my own voice on social media to be like really authentic, really honest. I took away the business corporate stuff and I just kind of was like, well, that's what, you know, I, I understand. I feel the same way. And I just changed my language. I wasn't pushing a subscription. I wasn't pushing kind of the bigger business values I literally stripped it all back and all communication was about kind of self-care which we've just talk, talked about but kind of that gifting message and I just like that whole call to action of subscribe I scrapped it and it was just send a parcel send a self-care parcel um, and actually then April ended up being the best kind of I mean I've only launched it since September but April was the best month for me yet and I didn't even like when I'm working before like, you know, 10 hour days, stressing out, trying to like get the business to go and actually me taking a step back, doing a few hours a day on Instagram, coming off, doing my own like social posts, not worrying about like ads. Actually that was kind of, we had the best month ever. And then it was kind of a few weeks ago, I 
we're just thinking about you know going forward how would the business even survive the cash flow is an issue um i've got all this obviously with the extra stock i bought for spring i also had stock left over from previous seasons that i didn't know what to do with and just with this natural kind of gifting that had come out um I kind of had the idea of doing a, a mini version of the box that you could build yourself out of a selection of all the stock we had left over from previous seasons or with the extra stock I had for this season. So I launched that last um, Thursday, so we could go now. And it's just like the kind of response to it's been amazing to the point where it's literally made me rethink the business. And the last kind of week or so I have been like, well, let's just see how this goes. But, you know, subscription and, and holding yourself to a deadline, if it has to come out at a certain point, especially when it's just you, that's quite challenging. And it has been quite stressful to do that. So actually, if I can, you know, pivot the business in a way that I don't necessarily have to hold myself to certain deadlines and renewals, then that for me personally would be great. Um, but it, ultimately, it comes down to what people want. If it's a subscription that people want, then that's what we'll go back to. But it's really great having the two running at the minute because I am literally now just going to use this time to see what works and what doesn't review the past. And like, can I pivot the business? And I think what's important is, you know, people understand that if businesses have to pivot or change, they're so, they get it. It's that this situation that's going on, like, it's not, it's totally down to you. And I think like before I've always felt nervous about changing anything because people will be angry, but people have been so understanding, um, which has been really good. And I think in terms of future plans, like I said, I'm just seeing how it goes. Don't think it's very useful at the minute to make any solid future plans just with, you know, we don't know what's going on. And to be honest, like, it could lead and probably will lead to disappointment because we don't even know when we can see people again or we can have events. And I think it would just not be the most productive thing to have like a six month goal because we don't know where the economy is going to be. We don't know where the consumer mindset is going to be. So for me, it is literally like day by day and just, I've got kind of a rough idea of where I want it to go. I'm going to start putting that together in the next few weeks of just like, okay, so what could the business be? Um, in a few months time or where could we go but you know I'm not gonna I'm not gonna hold myself to it too strictly just because God knows what's gonna happen mm. I think that's that's really key as well and it's um again it's it's about tapping into who you are as a person in terms of what works right I love that this is actually a really great time for experimentation and um, you can run two tracks in parallel as a business owner um, you can be doing one product or service, but you could also try something else at this time and you can run the two tracks in parallel and you might, might find, as you say, that the older version works better and the customers, that's what they want. Or you might find that the new version works better or you might find that both are equally great and everyone wants both of them at the same time. So you just don't know. And what I love there is what you've picked out is that your customers are really understanding. And this is where um, this is where the love piece comes in for me. You know, if our cust if we can show love towards other people, whether it's the people who are delivering our food to us or the people who are, I support this lady online called Wajia who has chocolatier brand. You know, I'm, I'm ordering her chocolate and you can't get to the post office to post things. This is what you deal with as well. You can't go to the post office as often as you would do before. Um, but customers are saying it's all right. We can wait. And if we can um, show that kind of love to people, whether it's out in public, someone steps too close to us, can we actually be like, actually, it's not my preference, but that's okay, you didn't realize. Um, so, and can we show our love to ourselves by just being compassionate to these other people and to this situation? So that was my final question and what I wanna close on um, before we leave, because I know we're running a little bit over to what we planned on. Um, so even if it's just one word or one sentence, just to say, can we show this love? Can we give this love to ourselves, to others and to this situation at the moment? And if I just go through alphabetical order, probably if we start with Emma. Absolutely. <laughs> we can go to Emily next, please. Emily? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I believe that everything is either a call to love or a call to fear. And I feel like this situation in the past few months has really highlighted that for me. So I do believe that 
it is a choice and I believe that it's a choice a lot of people are making to lean into the love and to try to bring love to this ridiculous situation. <laughs> mm-hmm. Amazing. I love that you picked out the fear as the, um, as the opposing force to, um, to love because a lot of people would say hate and that's such a, it's a, it feels horrible in my system even to say that, but it really is the fear. And I think I've felt both of these things and it's that seesaw again of being somewhere in the gray area or really in love or, or really in fear. So um, thanks for, for pointing that one out. Jane. Uh, yeah, I very much agree. I think um, it, there is fear and there is love and I think you, you fall into one of those and I think only through acting in love and behaving through love are we going to get through this, whether that's as individuals towards each other or whether that's businesses with the love to innovate or create new things or to solve problems. I think love is the only way. Thank you. Um, Rob, uh, Paula, sorry, I'm <laughs> getting my peas in my arse a little bit. Paula? Yeah. Uh- I'm just going to say choose love. Ah, <laughs> thank you, and Rebecca. Um, yeah, I just wanted to, on a personal level, 100%, like love's got to come for yourself before mm. you can kind of give love to others. But from a business point of view, like I mentioned earlier, at the start, I felt really uncomfortable with selling because um, it mm. didn't feel, especially quite a female thing, but uh, relevant for a lot of people is that they couldn't, love and selling is not joined and it, it's very like doesn't feel caring to sell something but I think what you've got to understand especially as a business owner is hopefully and, and for me particularly I genuinely love my product and I genuinely believe in its purpose and its help and it, and it does help and it is for self-care and I, I believe that's important so it's then mixing that you know love and selling or love and business and stuff can still work together as well and, and that is still a great relationship and don't be afraid of still you know, going for your business. It doesn't mean there's no love there. It means there's loads of love there. Mm, amazing. Oh, I love that point. I think um, it's, it can often be, I think we, we believe, what I'm hearing is we believe in the possibility of love being able to be shown in this time. We also completely understand that it's not possible 100% of the time. And these emotions that are coming through are coming in waves and they're coming in different flavors and varieties. And that we're kind of, from what I'm experiencing anyway, we're feeling all of the feels. And in this kind of intense environment we're in, they can be like moment to moment, like not day to day. It can be moment to moment, as Emily said earlier on. So I think love is a possibility here. And I think that's the message that I think all of us would want to get across. But also love yourself when you're not feeling loving towards yourself or other people or the environment or or selling. Like I really identify with this, like I can't love people if I'm selling to them, but it's like actually yeah, what I'm selling is going to help you. That's why I'm giving you love by telling you this is available. It doesn't need to be a hard sell. It can just be like, this is here for you when you need it. So um, I'm going to put us all on great view again, just so we can see everyone. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining um, in the panel. I want to thank the panel especially. And I also want to um, thank everyone who's watching this as well. I hope you found it useful. I hope you found different perspectives, either similarities to what you're experiencing or completely different perspectives to what you're experiencing. Um, Fiona Swinburne on day one, her parting message was, you are not alone and you really aren't alone. Um, I'm sure you've identified something that resonates with you um, in each one of these ladies. So just want to say thank you. And um, yeah, we will see you again soon. Thank you again. Thank you.